Welcome to France 2022, the campaign. It is our daily show covering the presidential race. 13 days to go before round one. So let's begin the show with the recap of this uh, weekend. On the menu, the president is called a murderer and snaps back. Leftist hopefuls are desperate to kill each other. And the green candidate is begging the youth to join him. Cholet Sidbon has the story. The presidential race picks up speed with four major rallies on Sunday. Eric Zemmour filled the iconic Trocadero Square used in past campaigns by the mainstream right. The hard right politician trying to convince voters he is the true right wing candidate. Nous sommes les seuls héritiers d'une droite qui aime la France, le peuple, le travail, l'ordre et l'identité. Tens of thousands of his supporters were there. And the national anthem wasn't the only thing they chanted in unison. Zamor later said he didn't quiet the crowd because he could not hear the words. This is what Emmanuel Macron had to say. Il y a deux hypothèses. La première, c'est l'indignité. C'est plutôt celle qui me semble la plus crédible. La deuxième, c'est la méconnaissance d'une réforme très importante du quinquennat, c'est le 100% santé. Et maintenant, les prothèses auditives, les lunettes et les prothèses dentaires sont remboursées par la Sécurité sociale. Et j'invite alors à ce moment-là le candidat malentendant à pouvoir s'équiper à moins de Jean-Luc Mélenchon said he is a nightmare for the rich whose money he wants to grab. That may be why to him, Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron have the same economic plans. Monsieur Macron. C'est le programme économique de Madame Le Pen, plus le mépris de classe. Madame Le Pen, c'est le programme économique de Monsieur Macron, plus le mépris de race. Communist Fabien Roussel says all of the right and center are controlled by business lobbies. Quand vous écoutez les Macron, les Pécresse, les Zemmour, les Le Pen, ils sont différents, mais ils ont un programme commun. Eux. Quand le Medef parle, ils exécutent. Eh ben, il est temps. Que les cigares changent de bouche. The previous day, socialist Anne Hidalgo held one of her largest rallies. She said, like Roussel, she's not dropping out of the race in favor of Mélenchon. Mais quelle ville, quel département, quelle région son mouvement a-t-il gagné avec ce sectarisme et ses outrances Ahead of Hidalgo, but still with only a handful of percentage points in polls, Green candidate Yannick Jadot called on climate-concerned younger generations to take part in the vote. Jeunes de France, faites irruption dans ce scrutin. Venez nous bousculer avec vos envies, avec vos colères. Rejoignez-nous, rejoignez-moi. That is all from today's campaign trail. Until we meet again. Okay, I'll wrap up there of the last 24 hours in French politics. Now, uh, for the past uh, few days, there's been a controversy brewing about the use by the Macron administration of outside uh, private consulting firms. First and foremost, Mark, McKinsey. Yes, absolutely. Indeed, a Senate report claims McKinsey received millions to offer guidance on different issues such as the COVID vaccination campaign, computer glitches uh, created by a housing subsidy program, or even uh, to reflect upon the future of teachers. And the Senate probe concluded that the company paid zero in taxes in France. This obviously prompted furious reactions on the left and forced the incumbents to react. Let's take a listen. Le macronisme a gaspillé de l'argent public en donnant à des cabinets privés qui par ailleurs ne payent pas d'impôts en France et dans une espèce de lien entre en, en court-circuitant notre administration. Donc cette privatisation de l'État est scandaleuse. Il n'y a aucun contrat qui est passé dans la République sans qu'il respecte la règle des marchés publics. Et là, il faut être très clair parce qu'on a l'impression qu'il y a des combines. C'est faux. Il y a des règles de marché public. La France est un pays de droit. S'il y a des preuves de manipulation, que ça aille au pénal. OK, Emmanuel Macron on the defensive there. Let's take a look and see how uh, everyone's doing in the polls. Why don't we look at the first round, Mark? A new poll by IFOP Fiducial. Yes, absolutely. A uh, new fresh, uh, fresh from this Monday. Uh, 
28% for Emmanuel Macron, uh, still uh, leading uh, the pack. Marine Le Pen still climbing steadily, 21%. Uh, she's well ahead of the uh, far-left leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who's uh, around 14%. He's been there for several days, uh, just like Valérie Pécresse has been around 11%, and Éric Zemmour, the other far-right candidate, at 11%. Uh, OK, that's the first round. What would happen in the second round? Uh, in the second round, it's getting really quite interesting because the race is definitely uh, tightening. 53% uh, for Emmanuel Macron, 47% uh, for uh, Marine Le Pen. She's back to the highest level. She's been in a presidential uh, poll. This is why you have some alarm bells ringing in the Macron camp saying this is not a done deal. The campaign is still uh, one we have to fight for and the presidential race is not a given. Okay, so just <coughs> six percentage points separating those two in the yes. second round. Um, now, unlike many of her rivals, Marine Le Pen decided that she wouldn't hold a big rally this weekend. Why not? Well, because she decided to cross the Atlantic and to visit the French overseas territory, a very symbolic visit that she had delayed umpteenth times. Uh, and uh, to talk about this very unusual trip, we welcome our campaign commentator, Angela Diffley. Welcome to you, Angela. Hi. So, Angela, uh, the, visit did, the visit didn't go quite as planned for Marine Le Pen. No, she was welcomed at the airport, but then the, she was heckled uh, and had, it disrupted a television show she was recording. She had to be hurried out and taken to the car park. A lot of people might wonder why she would go to a place like uh, Guadeloupe. But in fact, in the latest elections, the European elections, uh, they were the latest elections, she polled extremely well. She came top of all the candidates, or her party came top of all the other parties. That, of course, it should be said, against a background of an 85% abstention rate. But where she scores very highly in places like Guadeloupe is there is a big crime and security problem, and she's very tough on law and order, and also uh, public services. They say very often they feel neglected, they feel that hospitals and schools there are not adequately funded, and she hoped to score well on those. This was a setback, this being heckled, but she's had other setbacks in the campaign. She had to pulp a whole load of leaflets just after the Ukraine war, which showed her shaking hands with Putin. She will recover. She's had an extremely good campaign so far. And let me just uh, jump in here and ask, I mean, what's been uh, Le Pen's strategy during this campaign? Yeah. And what have we found out about her policies? Her strategy, she has changed. She has tried very hard to project more of her personality. She's talked about being a single mother, about how it's hard having the responsibility of bringing up children on your own. She talked about as well suffering because she was the child of Jean-Marie Le Pen, who was widely reviled in the 70s and 80s. She said it wasn't easy at school. And she also said a lot of people probably didn't realise this, but their family apartment in Paris was bombed. She was eight years old. She had shattered glass on her bed. So she has said, I've struggled through some tough things and I'm a survivor. She's also uh, tried to project a softer image generally. She actually trained and qualified as a cat breeder during the lockdown and she's projected a lot about her, lo her love of animals. It's going down really well among women. She's polling much better than Eric Zemmour amongst women. As for policies, she still has some anti-immigration policies. She says that the automatic right to French nationality for the children of immigrants born in France would end if she became president. She says the right for family members to join uh, uh, their immigrant members who are allowed in France would also end. She would also ban the wearing of the Muslim veil in public places. That's not banned at the moment in public places, although the burqa is. She says it's demeaning to women and so she would ban the veil. But she has spent a lot more time talking about cost of living issues. That's where she's really talked. She's talked far more about that than immigration this time around. She says she would reduce uh, VAT on uh, fuel from 20% right down to 5.5%. She would cut the retirement age from 62 to 60. And, of course, the big change since last time around, France would not leave the euro this time around. And it seems to be working. 21%, she's creeping up. Whatever she's doing, it seems to be working this year. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it. Well, thank you very much indeed for that, Angela Diffley. Thank you. Well, on Sunday, the pundit-turned far-right candidate Eric Zemmour decided to place himself in the footsteps of previous Conservative presidential contenders Nicolas Sarkozy in 2012 and François Fillon 
in 2017, Mark. He certainly uh, did. Uh, he staged a campaign rally on the famous Trocadero Plaza overlooking uh, the Eiffel uh, Tower, a very touristic place uh, normally, but it has become a very strong uh, symbol for the right. And Eric Zemmour is indeed eager to lure former conservative politicians and militants. Eloise Mélan and Clovis Casali were on hand for France 24. The rally is about to begin, and behind the scenes, Eric Zemmour's team is rushing to make sure the event runs smoothly. Tens of thousands from all over France have turned up in a show of support for the far-right candidate. Samuel Lafont is in charge of spreading his message on social networks. So we've got mass emails, we're creating content, we already have more than 100,000 tweets on Zamor at Trocadero. It will be the event of the presidential campaign. He was one of the leaders of the movement against same-sex marriage and in 2017 campaigned for François Fillon, presidential candidate for right-wing party Les Républicains. All those who voted for François Fillon should vote for Éric Zemmour because he's the best candidate and the one who represents them best. But wasn't it difficult for you to switch sides? No, not at all, because Éric Zemmour is the real candidate of the right wing. Zemmour says immigration is threatening France. With his nationalist and populist rhetoric, he's won over some conservatives who voted Fillon in 2017. For us, it's essential to show the world the French haven't said their final word. No one will steal France from us. France is ours. As our future president says, those who will try to steal France will have to rip our hearts out. Zemmour will send back all the immigrants. He will clean up France and we need it. Zemmour managed to attract political heavyweights from across the right, notably Marion Maréchal, the niece of rival Marine Le Pen. But despite these moves, he's still far behind President Macron and Marine Le Pen in the polls. Well, just before we finish, uh, let's uh, look at a slightly lighter story, Mark. Uh, maybe a more spiritual uh, note. Uh, all the presidential uh, hopefuls dreaming of the Élysée Palace sometimes get carried away and tend to behave well like Jesus Christ, maybe hoping to be the presidential man or women. You can see uh, those pictures on your screen. The verdict will be delivered not by God, but by the voters on April the 24th. All right, well, thank you very much indeed for that, Mark Perriman, and thank you to you as well, Angela Diffley. Thanks for today's edition of France 2022, the campaign. More news coming up very shortly here on France 24.